This video explains how to add minor tick marks without labels to a ggplot2 plot using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And we can click on this data frame to open a new window, which shows the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains six rows and the two variables X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines five and six of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line six. And then in the next step, we can use the ggplot and geomline functions to draw our plot in a line plot. So after running these lines of code, a new plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of our studio by running line 10 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a line plot with default specifications of the axis labels. Now, let's assume that we want to add additional minor tick marks to this ggplot2 plot without labels. Then we can apply the code that you can see in the following part of the video. So as a first step, you have to specify the breaks that you want to add for the minor tick marks. So in this case, I'm specifying a sequence from one to six by 0.5 intervals. So after running line 12 of the code, a new data object called my breaks is appearing at the top right. And we can print the content of this data object by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a vector object which contains all the breaks that we want to add. Now in the next step, we can use the ggp plot object that we have created in the beginning of this tutorial. And on top of this, we can add the scale x continuous function. And within this function, we specify the breaks argument to be equal to my breaks. So after running lines 15 and 16 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that we have added additional tick marks to our plot. However, you can see that in this plot, the additional tick marks that we have just added are labeled. So let's assume that we want to remove those additional labels from our plot. Then we can create another data object that I'm calling my labels. And this data object should contain information which of the labels should be set to blanks. So after running line 18 of the code, a new data object my labels is created. And in line 19 of the code, I'm setting those labels that should not appear to an empty character string. So after running line 19 of the code, our data object is updated and we can print the final my labels data object at the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 20. And then you can see all the labels that we will use for our X axis. And as you can see, only the labels two, four and six are kept as in our original plot. So now in the next step, we once again use our ggp plot object. And then on top of this, we add the scale x continuous function. We set our breaks to be equal to my breaks. And then in addition to that, we set the labels to be equal to our my labels data object that we have just created. So after running lines 22 to 24 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated. And as you can see, we have removed all the unnecessary labels and have kept only the values two, four, and six. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.